Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, talking fishing. If it's facts about fishing that you want to know, then tune in, folks, because this is the show. We'll show you all the right bait to use. So sit right back, you got nothing to lose. Doesn't really matter if it's trout or carp, flathead marlin or a gummy shark. Listen to the guys and you can't go wrong. They'll be talking about fishing till the cows come home. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. And welcome everyone to Talking Fishing, another big show coming away tonight. We're going to tell you that as of today, you can buy a digital fishing licence. A new podcast called The Potty Mullet is now available. What a uh, funny name. And uh, there's a lot on in Shepherd in this weekend. We're going to tell you all about that too. But ads, um, yesterday, yep. snowing, Mount Buller, Falls Creek. Ballarat. Bush, Ballarat. <laughs> what is going... We've got, actually got a guy who's got a... A kayak the same colour as yours on the show tonight. The same colour as mine. Yep. But I mean, how's the weather? It's it's back. Wouldn't be good for wouldn't be good for kayaking. It's no, it's not. Because no. all the bloody all the water's frozen over. Oh, it's no. it's backwards. But anyway, it can only get warmer. Uh, Merry cod opening, Charlie. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, it was oh, a cold Mary start. Cod opening, yeah. yeah. It was a it was a cold start from the footage yeah, I've seen from a few people. Mm-hmm. It was a cold but you, start. To Charlie, you were just saying yeah. before we started though that it's one of the best cod openings from yep. a, a water level and, and yeah, all that sort of point of view. Yeah, I keep banging on about um, water authorities and delivery mm-hmm. of water up in our neck of the woods mm-hmm. and uh, uh, Gold Murray Water and and the Broken Catchment Authority and those sort of guys. And I start sort of banging on to those. Say, look, I've got to have a dry bank event for cod opening, mm. uh, which we delivered this year with the, with the help of those guys. Nice. Dry safe. bank, dry bank, dry bank event. That Goulburn, has that so that's dropped right down. Yep. Because all those stonkers, we were talking about this the other night, yeah. all those stonking trout that they released for trout opening yeah. were almost inaccessible for about two months. Yeah, so it's not flowing at 100 miles an hour now? No, that's right, yeah. No. That, that's sort of upper Goulburn, mm-hmm. yeah. what Dave's talking about. But, but those fish yeah. would be in crystal clear water right now. If, if that's all dropped, they'd be in crystal clear water. It's probably a prime Pretty time good. to yeah, fish target them. <laughs> areas yeah. like Thornton right yep. now. Oh, exactly, yeah. Now up that way, you've got good access, you know, and walking, you can walk the streams and yeah. that type of thing. Yeah, it's really good. So, yeah. Yeah. It was cod yeah. opening, so we don't give rats about trout. Yeah. Wow, there you go. I'll tell you what, there's some <laughs> <Pack> brilliant... <laughs> you know, there is some brilliant <laughs> trout fishing yeah. on right now and the fly yeah. fishing comes into effect really yeah. surely but anyway folks let's have a look at what's being caught by the people at home it's time for catch of the week catch of the week brought to you by shimano now have a look at this adam tell me what how what resemblance do you have to this this is uh paul hilton a lovely it's good gumbo gummy shark from got the same colour kayak as you in the background. Kayak pink heaven one. at Langley. Pink one. You got a pink one. Well, no, kayak no, as well. No, the pink's me dad's. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's you brought your dad a pink it? kayak, yeah. did you? That's some bloke complaining to us during the week about... Good one, Paul. He reckons I don't like kayakers. I do not have a thing against kayakers. Mm. But? <laughs> no. No, I don't. Anyway, let's, let's keep moving on. I like kayakers, like you, Adam. Like, like a, you. Like so, a under the keel. <laughs> uh, Captain St- How old is Captain Steve Johnson? Oh, he's one of the veterans of the industry, let's just yeah. say that. Nine, he'd be up there with Don, 90 plus. Oh, 90, oh, Steve? 90 11. Steve, I hope you're watching. <laughs> David Kramer. Captain Kramer. Steve Johnson, he's, <laughs> yeah. he's chartering out of Westmore right now on Ace Fishing Charters. Mm. Have a look at the bags of whiting he's getting oh, right now. Yeah. This is from the, I think the crew from the Monash Medical Centre did a, oh, a, okay. a staff yeah, trip. Yeah. Um, you'd be pretty ne- happy with that. I've never Would seen you? a better presented table of wine. No. That's Steve. Yeah. He's a neat man. Attention to detail. Yep. 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 Attention to detail. Exactly. Yeah. Now this Good one, uh, the next one, I've got an email, this one. Uh, please find attached picture of Sam and Deborah Orr uh, with a 4.7 and a 3.4 kilo snapper respectively. Mm. Uh, Sam and Deborah outfished all competitors in the real Phillip Island Angling Club's fourth weekend competition for the 2019-20 season. Sam and Deborah won the senior 
heaviest fish competitions. The fish were caught on Sunday in Western Port. Nice. Uh, by the way, thanks to the teams from Better Boating Victoria, Catherine, Charlie, as well as Marine Safety Victoria and VFA for a great community event at the Angling Club on Friday the 22nd of November. So um, just some people, you know what? We just keep hearing praise about the work that Catherine and Charlie yeah, are doing on boat ramps. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the, well, the consultation consultation yep. on getting the design of boat that, ramps right. They're yeah. doing a great job. So those two fish we just saw in that last pick would yep. be a really good cooking size, wouldn't they? Yep. Like Definitely. A, you know, when they get really big... Yeah, they start getting a bit mushy. A bit dry. Oh, you uh, no, probably really got to bake them because you don't get a fry pan big enough. Oh, that's true. Yeah. The big ones are okay to bake if you do them right. Yep. Yeah, but no, look, look at them, perfect size. Mm. So, anyway, let's keep going over to Port Phillip Bay. Miles Attard, um, thank you, Miles, for yeah. great fish um, off the port Faulkner Beacon. So, nice plenty of fish, fish up north. Yeah, so the northern end still fishing good. really well. You yep. can the fish a bit shallower in there too. Down south, they're going well Classic as well. Shape of the fish, isn't it? Yeah, ha but have a look at these ones, Charlie. Oh, okay. Clayton as a party. A 9.1 kilo snapper oh, off Mount Martha. Look at a on that's that. a good fish. That's a good fish. I and mean, that's, that's, a got, a, that's got a, a head on it, hasn't it? <laughs> hey, that's Which like one? a beer in Shepparton, isn't Which it? Which one? <laughs> Both. Don't talk about him like that. Um, fish out fishing that. with him this day was Tim Gillespie. Have a look at this for a seven and a half kilo snapper off Mount Martha. Mm. Yeah, found a good patch there. A good yeah. fish. Yeah. They're on, aren't they? They're yeah. really going well. Well, good catches. I've got to say, it's still cold. Yeah. Yeah. Global warming's not happening. No. No, oh, well, climate change is not happening. Not speaking of the woods. No. Um, <laughs> the land-based people, I tell you what, are just enjoying. Flinders Pier's been good. Yeah, I know over in time. Western Port, but in Port yep. Phillip, Portsea Pier's got to be the number one for big calamari boys. Yep. And I know this isn't an absolute monster, but it's a fair size. Connor Lecompte, yeah. uh, if that's how you say it. Connor, well done. Great calamari of Portsea Pier. Got quite a yep. few that day. Yep, so I left with ink on his arm too. <laughs> Sprayed the pattern well. <laughs> uh, you might do the next one, Charlie. All right. Next one is um, Winston Defaults. You had a lovely, well said. Well, lovely uh, rainbow trout. Oh, is that uh, the Fern Tree Gully Quarry, which is a great place to go and fish. It's the weirdest looking rainbow. It's yeah, a recently seen. stocked brand right. new water. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's so, rainbow, fish. Is it? Got some good uh, excess pots, oh, I, I know. That's a brown, brown. isn't it? Yeah, it's a, We're looking from a distance here. Yeah. It's the brownest rainbow I've ever seen. Yeah. Mm. Good right. fish, though. Yeah, oh, nice I mean, fish. normally they only stock rainbows, don't they? Yep. The, uh, yeah, I don't know about and that. A, a bit of tin foil and a uh, shaving of lemon yep. rind and a bit of butter in there. Well done, Winston. Yeah, great job. What was your surname again? Uh, default. Nice. Yeah. Yep. No worries. Um, it was the start of cod season, Trelly. It was. Plenty of fish being caught. Sunday cod. Good condition. Sunday was the yep. first day. Yep. And uh, Daniel Pratt. He got out and got a 54 centimetre Murray cod. Nice. At kangaroo ground. Jeez, they're just in the good, Yarra. They're just a good oh, looking okay. fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Close to town. Yep. Yeah. Nice they're just a good looking fish. One kinda. centimetre undertaking size, but that's okay. Anyway, let it go. Uh, rumour has it, rumour has it mm. that uh, Murray cod closed season will not apply to the stocked waterways south of the, the divide in the future. Oh. So, you know, like Casey Fields has got some in. Oh, yeah. Uh, Furniture Gully Quarry. It's like the rumour file, is it? It's the, the uh, rumour file. Ru <laughs> well, <laughs> two weeks' time, we've yeah. got the Minister, Jala Pulford. She mm -hmm. might announce this. Yep. If it's, I don't know if they're going to have that done yep. by then. Kevin Jala. Yep. But um, yep. that's the rumour is that Murray Cod mm -hmm. closed season will not apply to water south of the divide yeah. except for the Yarra River. Wow. Okay. Takes in a couple of lakes over the Western District too, probably. Yeah. Oh, I reckon it will. Yeah. Trilly, Interesting. Let's draw the line. Yeah. yeah. So go. let's see. And uh, lucky last, Charlie, I think this young lady works for you. Karen Reese, uh, Murray Cod at Bridgewater. Nice. Karen. We never get a report from Bridgewater. No. Karen's a star. Yeah. Absolute star. That's and a nice a, cod. A good fish. Husband Justin, who run our, our Bendigo store. Yep. Um, yeah, they, they just got, yeah. got a great photo of Justin as well, but yeah. um, we had to draw the line at 10, so <laughs> there's just not enough for I guess, yeah, I saw that in the yeah, show. Yeah, but, um, and they a, picked the window, they said, like, all Sunday yeah. was pretty you know, nasty weather. It wasn't nasty, but it was like yeah, un average. unclement weather up there. Yeah. I was like, oh, we had, to, we, we had a 20 minute window, I had to get out, go fishing, so there was a boat, there was stuff to go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Stuff. If you'd like to send in a, a, a pick of your catch of the week, this is what you have to do. If you want to be like me and have your photo on TV, 
Email your fishing pics to info at ifish.com.au. Go Bye! Yeah, I want to go fishing. I didn't realise we're still playing Chloe Malloy. Yeah, like I've yeah. had enough of Chloe. Go to the pies. Hey? Uh, never have enough of Chloe. Oh, we're going to have to film something different during yeah. the summer break. But anyway, coming up next, fisheries news, including how to buy a digital fishing licence. Next on Talking Fishing. Talking Fishing. We know what you'd rather be doing. We know what you've really got in mind. We know you'd rather be out fishing And today's the day you're gonna wet a line Cause every day's a good day Stop wishing Every day's a chance to drift away Drift away Every day's a good day for fishing See you down at Tackle World today Talking fishing, talking fishing Nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing Live from the studios of Channel 31 Melbourne, it's now time for some very fishy news. Plenty of news tonight, Charlie, but just yep. before we do, uh, Lisa from Facebook is asking how do Murray Cod eat? With how do they eat? eat? Yeah. With their mouth? Um, Good question. That's all I wanted. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Let's go. That's all. You were oh, a bit slow with that. Think about it, yeah. What were we going to say, with their ears or something? Yeah. You are thinking about it too long. <laughs> all right, news. Let's get into it. Um... Oh, the big announcement today, there was actually two announcements. Uh, they were like in consequent... Um, I don't know. Yeah, sorry, mate. Yeah. Still <laughs> <on there>. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa's going to be wondering. Oh. Uh, digital licences and new app to get more people fishing. So today, recreational fishers now have access to a digital licence and will soon be able to record catches on their phones with a free app thanks to the Andrews Labor Government. We're going to look at the app in a second, but the digital licence, you can buy it through the Service Victoria's digital wallet which will also make it simpler, faster and easier for fisher fisheries officers. Remember we had someone on the show? Old oh, mate. A chick. Uh, a chick. I <laughs> can't remember her name. Old oh, mate, yeah. Um, she's going to kill us if she's watching. <laughs> but so you, you, a fisheries officer can come up beside the boat, like 10 yeah. metres away, you can check, oh, yeah, you've got licences, yeah, we can yep. do, do all that, right? Now, I went through this process and last night, just as a test case, and... What you do is you can buy your licence online like normal, mm -hmm. yeah. go through all the prompts, and when you get to the very end, it says, do you want a plastic card or a digital licence? Yep. The digital yeah. licence sits on your phone in your digital wallet. Yep. And as I said to Travis Stelling, who goes through eight phones a year because he leaves <laughs> them on trams or drops them, um, what do you do when you lose a ph phone? He said, I don't know, but I've got one for three years. So. <laughs> anyway, but the app, now there's a new app coming. Have a, let's, let's cross to the video now, because I think that explains it well. Have a look at this. Introducing Go Fish Vic, a new app by the Victorian Fisheries Authority that revolutionises the way anglers approach fishing. By allowing fishers to record and share their successes, Go Fish Vic provides unprecedented insight to improve your fishing success and discover fishing hotspots across Victoria. Every year, thousands of anglers like you fish countless rivers, lakes, bays and offshore waters. Until now, there has been no centralised place that stores all the data recorded by anglers around the state. The Go Fish Vic app changes this, offering many benefits for the individual fisher, angling clubs and fisheries management as well. The app includes an angler diary feature, which allows every angler to log and view their catch data by trip, species and location. Over time, you'll be able to review your own performance and compare your catch rates with your mates. You can also choose what privacy settings suit you best, so there's no need to worry about giving away your secret angling spots. As the information in the database builds, app users will receive the latest insights into the best performing waterways in Victoria, helping you fish and get the best tips on how to catch more fish. In planned upgrades, Go Fish Vic will help fishers find an organised fishing event or join a local angling club. Angling clubs can use Go Fish Vic to attract more members and promote their fishing events. The latest fishing competition results and events are all provided in one spot, making it easier for you to remain in touch with the angling community. The data captured by anglers throughout the state is a crucial aspect of fishery management. Understanding catch rates, species and size of fish tells us a lot about how our fisheries are performing. This information will be used by the VFA to monitor the health of our waterways. Using Go Fish Vic will ensure a strong and sustainable future for Victorian anglers. 
You can join the community of anglers by changing the way Victorians fish. Download the app from the Google Play or App Store today. Go Fish Vic. It's your fishery. Get involved. Now, don't, don't try and download it today because the next line is, the free app is available from the 1st of January 2020 and will help fishers record all those details. So um, it's not available to the 1st of January. You can get the app, but you'll, it'll be the old app. So, And I can guarantee you guys, uh, number one, the actors in that video were not paid a cent. <laughs> and, and two, no fish, no fish were harmed in making that uh, video. No, they weren't caught. <laughs> a couple of good looking roosters on there. There was a couple of good looking yeah. roosters, I tell you. Um, I'll tell you what's all happening. But digital digital licenses okay. yeah. available. Yep. Available today. Excellent. And um, direct if you can't do a direct direct the inquiries to Travis Dowling. <laughs> <laughs> he apparently he's got a three year license that'll last him three up, years. Yeah. Uh, the next one, interesting one. So mm. the Victorian Wild Trout Strategic Plan has been released, a draft. Mm -hmm. uh, here it is. And a strategy is, um, has been implemented because there's been a lot of work over the last few years on wild trout. Yep. And you know the, the trout conference that's on yep. every year up at Mansfield, which is really good. But a strategy is now required to focus further investment in maintaining wild trout fishing opportunities in the future. So we've got a great stock trout yep. uh, fishery, but you know the wild trout fishery is equally important. And you can have your say. There's a few details on your screen there. Um, the plan was developed with 30 wild trout fishers, some of the experts throughout the state, through a two-day workshop on uh, 4th and 5th of October. They've got a plan. It's up on the website there uh, at vfa.vic.gov.au. You can respond via email after you've read it. It's only a six-page document. Get on there, download it, have a look at it. It's a pretty good plan. Uh, the only thing I feel that's missing is that they don't talk about wild trout lakes. And uh, I brought that up at the trout conference yeah. that, uh, you know, everything you hear about wild trout is all river focused. Yep. And yet, you know what, if you Google the um, top 10 trout fisheries in Tasmania, yeah. seven of them are lakes. Did that come up in the trout conference at Mansfield about three years ago, didn't it? Two years I was ago. asleep in that little section. Oh, <laughs> that wild trout lake, because I was stocking them. And in some parts they weren't stuck in the wild yeah. trout were actually getting going yeah. better than the. Well, places trout. I say are wild trout lakes are like uh, Tarago. Yep. Lake Yildon to an extent because I know they stock them, but there's yeah, also they're, they're there's really rivers. Rare, so, uh, and uh, I think Dartmouth is a wild population up there. So yeah. I'm saying some of these lakes, um, yeah. Tarly Khan. You ever heard of Tarly Khan? You should Google it. Yeah. T A L I. Yeah. K-A-N-G-H, I think it is. Mm. Lake Tarley Khan, you have to hike into it. Okay. 1,500 years ago, someone was there recording at the top of the mountain, fell off, blocked the river, yeah, yeah. created a lake, and somehow there's trout in There's no way that they could physically get in there and stock the lake. Really? But there's wild trout in there, so anyway. Tipped over, top of the mountain, tipped over like a cartoon. Just fell off. Yep. Off the creek. Yeah. <laughs> yep. All right, on this weekend, um, getting yelled at for talking rubbish. Uh, this weekend, 7th and 8th of December, in Shepparton Trelly, yes. there's, a, there's a few things on. Lots it's on. the Codstable. What? Is that what they call it? There you go. Codstable. There's a Vic Fish Kids event and a Correct. river festival. That's right. Uh, learn about what you can do in the bush and catch a cod at the lake. River Connect and the Victorian Fisheries Authority are throwing a party to celebrate our rivers and the yep. recreational clubs who love and protect them. Enjoy free kids' activities, food trucks, and a chance for everyone to try fishing and other river activities. On in Shepparton, 10 o'clock till 4 o'clock on Saturday. On Saturday, that's right. I'll be there. Yep. Um, helping out. I, Karen will be there. My daughter will be there from Women in Recreational Fishing and a lot of others. Yep. Um, great, great program. There'll yep. be some... Um, Demonstrations on casting and just all that good information, yeah. some food. Casting right. competition, inflatable obstacle course, photo booth, yep. and many more kids' activities. So, great right. excuse. The constable. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's going to be blowing festival. a gale Saturday morning. Constable. Why wouldn't you just jump in the car and head to Shepparton yeah, yeah, for the yeah, day? That's right, yeah, that's yeah. Or the I mean, weekend. Plenty of um, or the weekend. on hand help. Yeah, we're going to talk about what's happening Sunday in a minute, Trelly. Mm. Uh, this one here, oh my God. Uh, this is a media release here. New fisheries podcast set to make a splash. Podcast. A podcast. Now, fisheries. It's got the best name ever. Yeah. <laughs> Recreational and commercial fishers, growers, seafood consumers, and people 
who simply love our waterways can now tune into the Victorian Fisheries Authority's new fortnightly podcast, The Potty Mullet. The Potty Mullet. <laughs> Oh my god. The Who thought of that? Travis. Travis. We want to share the amazing stories up close and personal by recording candid conversations mm. about what's going on in Victoria's aquatic backyard, Mr. Dowling said. The potty mullet is another meaningful way for us to connect with our stakeholders, complementing our significant social media presence, which is widely considered a national leader amongst fisheries agencies. The first episode, which is now available, features Minister for Fishing and Boating, Jala Pulford, and Travis Dowling, explaining how phase two of Target One Million is making Victoria an even better place to wet a line with family and friends. Episode two, uh, will be with Steve Vidler from our Snobs, Snobs Creek Hatchery, who will talk about how native fish, including the iconic Murray Cod, are bred and grown to a size for release into our lakes and rivers. Episode one of the Potty Mullet is available now on your favourite podcast app or head to vfa.vic.gov.au forward slash the Potty Mullet to listen online. If that's not out of um, mm. utopia, yeah. do you watch <laughs> Utopia? No. I just thought it might have come over a meal of turkey. What? I might have come over, over a meal of turkey. Do you listen to Where's, podcasts? Uh, I, I have started listening to some podcasts. They um, are yeah. amazing. Radio they? is dead. Yeah, right. I no? guarantee it. Can Give you, me a podcast you, any day of the can week. Can you like, participate? Ring in? <laughs> pod in? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> Your face pod. Your face pod? Yeah. Face pod. Your face pod. Oh, yeah. No, it's in all seriousness, no though. Podcast. Podcasts. Get on it. You sure? Get on it. Mm. Nothing beats Probably AW not. in the morning on the way to work. Oh, yeah. If you're file. Yeah, if you're 107. <laughs> <laughs> Triple M. Aussie. Mm. You got digital radio at home? No. Triple pod- M country. Podcast, mate. That's oh. all I need. Yeah. John Denver and Co. Cakes on the griddle. Let's go. Oh, All right. The last, the last one. Heidi, our, uh, our, our pro- teleprompter. Just rolled she's, her eyes a bit. Yeah, she's, in, <laughs> she's in the corner cowering. <laughs> cowering over. Podcast. You're not um, supporting 3AW. Jack, Jack um, Murray Codference is on this Sunday. Come yes. along to our fourth conference to hear about a uh, whole lot of stuff about it's up on your screen there a um, whole lot of stuff um, John Kay will be there Bre- Dr. Brett Ingram Graham yep. Deer will be there uh, lots uh, this Sunday 9 till 4 East Bank Conference Centre in Shepparton you can yep. stay the weekend go to the get on it Codf- Codstable yep Codstable. on Saturday and the Straight Murray the Codference conference on Sunday. Sunday, make, Sunday make a weekend of it That's there you right. go Probably back at Trolley's shop for an ale after the conference. And, yeah, all right, yeah. it's all good. Uh, coming up next, product of the week, something to keep you cool in summer and hot in winter. Next on Talking Fishing. Talking Fishing. Now, product of the week, boys. Yeah. Um, we all know about it—the the brand Yeti, yeah. which, which is amazing. But up at the Trout Conference, I know you guys couldn't make it this year, but mm. the guest speaker was a lady called um, Hillary Hutchison, yeah. and Hillary is just one inspirational individual. She's mm. from Montana, USA, mm. and she was talking about. Like, so she lives in like the most northern tip yeah. of the USA, wild country, bears and all that sort of stuff. And she mm. started telling me this story uh, on the Friday night at mm-hmm. dinner about how your esky's got to be bear proof. Yeah. And I go, what? And she goes, yeah, yeah. It's got to be. It's got to be, by law. Mm. Anyway. Put I a koala bear in there. What I heard at dinner, I said, I've got to capture in an interview. Have a listen to this. Well, I'm here with Hilary Hutchison from Montana, USA. What are you doing in Australia? 
Well, I came out here with the Victoria Fisheries Authority to go to the Talk Wild Trout Conference yeah. um, in Mansfield, which was awesome. So this day of kind of seminars and information from scientists, all kinds of fisheries biologists and riparian experts and, um, and fish guides and all kinds of just information for locals about trout fishing here in Australia. So I came out to kind of talk about some of the things that we see and do in the U.S. and share information and I uh, did one of the talks and um, it's been super fun. I got to do some fishing and travel yeah. around a little bit. Mm -hmm. hey, so you're a fly fishing instructor in some pretty wild areas of the U.S., aren't you? Yeah, I get to guide up in the what we call the crown of the continent, so kind of the top of the United States yeah. geographically. We're just south of the Canadian border and I guide on the border rivers of Glacier National Park. So the southern border being the middle fork of the Flathead River and the North Fork of the Flathead River on the western border of Glacier. Uh, and then I also guide in the wilderness in Idaho as well. So some really beautiful wilderness areas and wild and scenic river borders is what we call them. And so there are freestone rivers, no dams. They're super wild and dynamic. So lots going on in these rivers with rapids and pool and drop and long flat spots and just uh, some fun water. Well, mm -hmm. apart from being inspired to go to Montana, the other thing is you spoke about what we call in Australia an esky or, you know, a cool box or whatever, but uh, you spoke about Yeti because you're one of a handful of a few women in the world that is a Yeti ambassador. And you just started using it, didn't you? Because it's like, it's the top class, isn't it? Yeah, I long before I was a Yeti ambassador, I was purchasing Yeti products full price because um, I needed to have the best stuff that I knew wouldn't fail me in the field. And that's not a cliche thing. That's a real thing. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, if your gear fails when you're away in the back country, there's nothing you can do. And then all eyes are on you. Clients are looking at you like, yeah. is this joker? You know, yeah. you have to have tip of the spear products to do that kind of work. And, and uh, my parents taught me at a very young age because they were mountain climbers and, um, and park rangers. And they said, you know, um, you don't have to have a lot of money. My parents never made a lot of money and mm. they would buy the best products once. And so yeah. my mom still has the mountaineering jacket that she wore guiding really? the Mount Rainier. And my, my dad, same thing. They still have the same backpacks and everything um, because they would get the tip of the spear style products yeah. and stuff that- When you say um, tip gonna, of the spear, so they yeah, the like, highest quality. Yeah, I mean, just like, you know, the, the point, the, the point of the arrow there that, that's gonna, really drive it home and yeah. and we're talking about people you know who are tip of the spear kind of people and products yeah. and um who are you know doing the very best they can out in yeah. some wild rugged country so yes is the only thing you would take i mean oh, you, totally. you talked about how the guys that own yeti i guess and developed it yeah. they they wanted something they could stand on they could treat bad and it was right? tough yeah yeah it started with um roy and and ryan cedars you know the brothers who were um out fishing for tarpon and wanted to be able to stand up on a casting platform uh tried to stand on their coolers they would break they tip over you know and they'd have to keep throwing them away they knew they were going into the landfill so they kind of started building like a plywood platform on top of their coolers to try yeah. to reinforce them and just started thinking gosh if we could build one that was tough enough um, and that could also keep our stuff cool for our entire fishing trip that'd yeah. be great so they just kind of started working on it innovating innovating and built this kick-ass cooler and um, and then they started realizing wow it's this tough that for places like Northwest Montana, where you have bears and you're required to have bear-proof containers, that can really work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By law, I have to be bear-proof. <laughs> yeah, you can't. Well, I mean, if you know the whole thing, a fed bear is a dead bear. You can't be yeah. letting bears come into your kitchen and eat all over your yeah. food. That's you know that yeah. you can't do that. So, um, so that's why I started using them. So I needed something yeah. that was bear-proof in the back country. And um, same thing, it, it, you know, when we're traveling around Montana, you've got like this equipment, you don't know what you're gonna do, where you're gonna be, it has to be bear proof. Mm. So the bear proof thing was the main reason for me. Yeah. Um, I wasn't thinking about using it as a testing platform at the time, and you since then um, have been using, you know, these coolers for, for yeah. multiple applications yeah. for sure. Now, you know, we have bears in Australia. Koala bears. <laughs> yes, yeah, the qualifications to be a bear. Yeah, yeah not a bear. <laughs> but you, so cute. <laughs> there you go. So, Yeti, it's 12 years old in America, but I tell you what, it's only new in Australia. People are getting onto it. You can get in and check out the Yeti range. And thank you to the bloke in Mansfield, the, the hole in his muffler that kept driving past. <laughs> <laughs> so, made a great interview Just even better. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, Look, I don't reckon I captured it nearly as well in that interview as what 
like I said, before, you know, the night before at dinner, yeah. that she's an inspirational character yeah. and just someone that is out in the absolute wild amongst the bears, amongst the wild trout, yeah. glacier-fed rivers, and uh, made me want to go to Montana and, and go on yeah. a guided trip with with Hillary. But she speaks about this brand that is just mm. unbelievable, lads. And it, yeah, and it has exploded in Australia over the last 12 months. Yeah. And listen, a, a, lot of, a lot of companies in a lot of different places and a lot of different things claim to have the best product. Oh, we're only making from the best thing and it's the best quality. Mm. Listen, when we first got Yeti, we put it to the test, uh, as in we filled an icebox full of ice yeah. and the boys had their hot coffees in, in these array of different tumblers and bits and pieces. Now, one of our staff at Mornington filled his coffee in the morning, yep. got busy and forgot about it. Yep. Came back at the end of the day and it still burnt his mouth. Yeah. 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 This stuff is, good. is legitimately that good and the brothers that came up with the, the concept mm. and started doing all this work, they weren't interested in anything but the best. Mm. The, the Rambler or the hopper that you've got on your left there, Charlie, yep. these things are designed to be thrown around, mm. leak proof, stood on, yep. sat on, do mm. your worst and it will perform as good as it did the day you bought it. Yeah. Leak proof, tear proof, they have tie down pieces. They've literally thought of everything. Mm. If you've got that mm. on a boat or your ice boxes, they've got tie down points that you can strap to your boat mm. so they can't go anywhere, you can stand on them. Uh, you can fill them with what, ice and keep fish in them. What about yeah. this? So let's have a look at that. They have their own ice packs. Yes. They reckon that if you have one of those and you throw one of them in one of them, with ice, that actually makes the ice stay less than frozen, yeah. if there's such a thing. That's, yeah, that's right. It's the just, chemicals that are in that just say it yeah. makes a normal bag of ice last a yeah. hundred times longer. Everything, like, it's amazing. Everything is done to the highest possible quality that they can get their hands on at yeah. this point in time. And like all good stuff, there's accessories to go with everything. So mm. every, every form of drink cooler you can get alternative caps for. So whether you're trying to keep it long term, mm. whether you want to sip out of it, there's ones with straws, straws to help with the kids. Sorts, yeah. There is all sorts of all sorts of things, all sorts of goodies. Mm. Check it out. Listen, it's not cheap. It is not supposed to be. It is a premium product. It does everything it claims to and more. Yeah. Coming into the Christmas period, I think we get asked a lot, Dave and, and Charlie, we yeah. get asked a lot, what do I get the fisherman who's got everything? Yep. I guarantee he this. doesn't have this stuff yeah. and it will serve him or her extremely well. Yeah, well said. Coming up next, Kramer's Mailbag. Plenty more next on Talking Fishing. Talking Fishing. We know what you'd rather be doing. We know what you've really got in mind. We know you'd rather be out fishing. And today's the day you're going to wet a line. Cause... Every day's a good day Stop wishing Every day's a chance to drift away Drift away Every day's a good day for fishing See you down at Tackle World today Talking fishing, talking fishing Nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing <laughs> Uh, a little bit of mailbag, boys. Let's get into it pretty quickly. It is Christmas time, and uh, Ads, you even sent me a photo of your Christmas tree that you set up yeah, on the weekend. Yeah, I was uh, just letting you know that the tree that you kindly donated to my family <laughs> last year is still yeah. going strong. Mm -hmm. I was jealous because I went to buy one on the weekend and they'd sold out. Oh, no. So you got a Christmas late. tree and I haven't. <laughs> but anyway, old mate Shane, he wrote into us and have a look at this. He set up his Christmas, Christmas tree on the weekend and have a look at this. Um, found a good use for some of my squid jig collection. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's hung squid That's jigs it. off his... That's awesome. Anyway, <laughs> Shane, get a laugh. Yeah. Um, no, no, I would mean that in a uh, nice way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Go fishing. <laughs> Macca wrote to us. Yeah. Oh, Macca. Yeah, something in store for Macca. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> excited about the new boating app. I downloaded it to my phone. On hearing the benefits of registering, I decided to register. All right. Mm -hmm. All was going well until I got to the password step. The password required 10 characters. One uppercase, one lowercase, one number, and one character. What the? 
<laughs> Already struggling to keep up with hard to remember passwords. Come on, Macca. I don't need another one. Come on. Why is the required password strength level so high when the risk of being hacked is that um, is that they know I prefer fishing over water skiing. <laughs> <laughs> Surely a four-digit password would suffice. And I'll tell you what, Macca, you're one of about 300 that... Yeah. Oh, over here. Yeah. Macca, you're one of about 300 people yeah. that wrote to us about the same thing, the password. Well, four-digit, they're going to be one uppercase one. Like <laughs> no, one. it's... Uh, going to be ten characters. Ten characters. Oh, ten characters. Yeah. The phone can remember it these days. Yeah. Just make it once and say remember you'd it. A, you'd have to... What? Thumbprint it. No. Nah. Yeah. No, nah, I'm old school. You'd have to get a tattooed on your arm so you remember it. <laughs> yeah. And then, they, then they'll come up with an update and you have to change it in the tattoos. <laughs> RS. Use your phone. Yeah. They were talking yeah. about RS the other day. Is everyone yeah. RS a common term still? What is it? What? Rat. Rat. <laughs> you don't know. RS. You don't call things RS. I no. just call them rat. <laughs> All right, this is from uh, Peaches. Peaches, right? Mm -hmm. No, it's. Features. It was going to be a good one if you laugh when I read it. That was a good yeah, song years ago, wasn't it? I don't know. I don't know why I read these things out. Um, <laughs> hi, guys. Thanks for a great show. Always interesting and informative. I'm a land-based fisherman, mainly in Port Phillip Bay. I'm wondering about the possibility of getting a jet ski exclusion zone around land-based fishing structures in the bay. Say, for instance, 200 metres around a jetty and piers and possibly also for places like rock platforms and headlands. I've lost track of the number of times over the years when operators of these craft have encroached upon busy fishing areas mm. and in most situations where they, unlike the fishermen, have plenty of other options of where to go. I'm generally against small laws and rules, but this happens far too often. Obviously, courtesy and common sense are steps too far for some of these people from isn't, peaches. Isn't that law already in place? Yeah, it's so far from the... They're not allowed to be within those areas. No, if you want to go and pick up your mate from the pier, you can. Or your jet ski. Yeah, but you've got to be... You you know, speed your there's a speed restriction. You can still do a donut at five knots. Yeah. <laughs> Or you want to pick I up would. somebody to pick up your bait and take it out to the, you know, that's right. Yeah. And drop it. No, there's lots of reasons why jet skis should be allowed, <laughs> allowed around piers. <laughs> I might, I might be on one myself yeah. this summer. Target for sinker throwing competitions. Target one million. Yeah. Try and spray a million people in one donut. <laughs> Don't that's ever a... tease me about being in a kayak. <laughs> good, good <laughs> letter. If you... He's one of them. <laughs> He's one of them. Yeah, who... Jet skier. If you'd like to write in to Kramer's mailbag, this is what you do. Send your mail to Kramer's Mailbag, P.O. Box 734, Patterson Lakes, Victoria 3197 or email kramer at ifish.com.au. We had a very interesting conversation over a quiet ale and a meal before we, we came in here. and it, yeah. it was based around how many rods you're allowed to have. Oh, yeah. You know, because oh, yeah. I think yeah. what the law in... Salt water is different to fresh water. Four, Four rods in salt water, two rods in fresh water, is yeah. that correct? Correct, yeah. And the conversation was based around let's face it, you don't go fishing with two rods these days. You go with at least nine. Yeah. Like if you're in a say say you're out on the river trolley yep. and you're on your own and yep. you're just going for a cod fish, say cod opening. Yep. Four point two meter tinny. Okay, so the yeah. tinnies that Open most the top. a lot of well but a lot yeah. of tinnies these days have got rod lockers, they've got storage everywhere, you've a got six thousand rod not, holders. No, but as in not most you know what I mean. Yeah. yeah. How many rods would you take with you? Um I would take I'd put probably like a spinner bait, a deep water lure, a top water lure, um and probably okay, a, I'll stop a you right shallow there. and then a bait bait. So I'll stop I'll stop you yeah. right there. Does that mean legally you're breaking the rules by having more than two rigged rods on the boat? Uh, unless they're stored. What, are they going to be rigged but what's, or unrigged? But what's stored mean? I'm in a kayak and I've got rod holders all over the thing. If I'm, yeah. if it's well, behind even a, me... Even a small tinny, though, yeah. how are they yeah. stored? They're just lying no, across no. the okay. seats. Well, if it's behind yeah. me in a rod holder, yeah. what's so stored mean? Not a new mean? sticker on it? I don't know. And not, <laughs> and not in use. <laughs> sick, not in use. No, but, no, but in, in all oh. seriousness, though, like, yeah, what's up, mate? When, you, when you go for a flick bit of lure, you're right, you've got... Yeah, that's right. Because you come to a structure and you say, oh, it's a bit of deep water, so I'll try to do that. Yeah, that's right. Mm. A bit of shallow water, you try to spin a bait. And, and it's not and it's not being, you know, a lot of people I, I, got I, reckon, rods. I, I mean, people like Travis Dowling in his 2.8 metre tinny going down the Murchison, um, you know, the yeah. Goulburn, he'd Look probably have 12 Porcupine. rods and still doesn't catch a fish. <laughs> <laughs> but he's prepared yeah, to catch but, one. And the thing is, too, we're governed by what we can catch. So it's a bit yeah. like, you know, we can only take two, two it, cod. Yeah, but are you allowed to have that many rods in your boat? 
Um, again, it's getting back to that is player it, is stored what is, and what yeah, you're actually using. What does stored mean? That's right. I mean, if you've got a rod locker, beautiful. Leave them under there. No one even knows is they're it, there. Have if you looked you, up the wreck fishing guide? I, I looked it up this morning. Yeah, it's confusing. Poor old Gary Norton, he's caught this, this yeah. spiny cray that yeah. long, right? <laughs> and he goes, I had to throw it back. I said, why? And he goes, it's Glenelg. I said, yeah. what's, what's, what's it doing down in Gippsland? What's it doing in Gippie? Yeah, that's right. He's on, <laughs> on the wrong Send way. me the photo yeah. and I'll get it checked out. And yeah. it, it turned out to be a Gippsland um, freshwater crayfish that's open slather. Yeah. He threw three of them back. Yeah. They're eight foot long. Bad luck for you, Gaz. Uh -huh. They no, would have fed, fed a whole family yeah. for three months. So, yeah, this, it's a... Yeah. Uh, Silvio the Concreter. Yeah. He said, he, said he put his picture up on social media. Yeah. And Silvio, the concreter. Yeah. Yeah, he got bagged because he had eight rods in the background of his boat. What do you mean he got bagged? Well, he had eight rods standing up in the, in the background the of warriors his photo the shot. Keyboard, the keyboard. But you don't know how many people were in the boat too at the same time. And it, and it was an open top with no gunnel or anything. Yeah. So, you know, where do you store your rods? You're right, though. That's an interesting point you brought up before. Charlie, is mm. what does it matter how many rods you've got when you have a bag limit to apply to? That's right. Why what should it matter how many rods you've got? What's the slot for Murray Cod? Two. Oh, slot is 55 <laughs> to 75. 55 to 75, yeah. yeah. And two fish. Yep. So, so should it? Yeah. I don't understand. That was unrelated. I was just wondering. Yeah. <laughs> by the way. It's a slot. Because off a pier, I get it. I mean, the amount of times you walk down the end of a pier, Morty Alec or Mornington, there's one dude with 600 rods and he's <laughs> taking yeah, up the whole prime bit of the should yeah. you be, pier. Should you be allowed to have four rods off a pier? Because uh, we hear the stories about yeah, Mornington right. Pier. So where that is an issue. If you've got 10 people, that's 40 rods. That's yeah. Yeah. That's and they spread those four rods out so yeah. no one can get anywhere near. Yeah, that's I think right. the fisheries yeah. regulations are being um, looked at now. Yeah, well, that's right. Mm. And, um, the rod thing's an interesting one. It is, yeah, and it comes up a fair bit because you've got you know, your regulation between Tokemore Bridge or Cobram and, and the weir at, at Mulwala because they've got a closed season in there. And that's where they, they'll really bang you there as far as this rod thing, you know. You've got two rods there, four rods and all rigged up. They'll, they'll, is the they'll laws the same in New South Wales? Uh, no, it's, it's, it's slightly different again, yeah. What is it? Yeah, it's similar. It's, it's, again, you've got, you've got an area where you can have two rods in your boat, basically. You've got another two rods that have even got hooks and sinkers on them, and you've got lures, two lures and two rods with hooks and sinkers. Hmm. There's four rig rods. You can basically have, you've got to cut the rigs off the other one and put them away. Really? Hmm. There you go. Interesting. All too confusing. Um, I'll tell you what, coming up next is the all-important hotspots. Sunday is the day of the, or the day of the year so far. Um, Sunday. Oh, okay. Well, it's been blowing for eight months. It's true. Sunday's going to be a good day. We're going to tell you where to go fishing next on Talking Fishing. Talking Fishing. G'day. Callan here from Paul Worsland's Tackle World Cramburn. Supercharged batteries have been supplying maintenance free marine batteries since 2001. The Seamaster Gold Range is second to none, delivering superior starting power and reserve capacity. No need to top up with water. Truly a fit and forget battery. With up to two years replacement warranty, you know you have quality. Your battery is your lifeline. Without it, you're dead in the water because it's bloody hard to push start. I've got a Seamaster battery in my boat. Make yours a Seamaster Gold today. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. And now the segment you've all been waiting for. Hot Spots, brought to you by Seamaster Batteries. All right, into the hot spot straight away. Yep. Uh, guys, top end of the bay, a little bit warmer yep. than the rest of the bay. And mm. as uh, we've heard, you know, by many people, it's still hovering under 17 degrees That's for wrong, December. Isn't it? Yeah. Altona is our number one hot spot for snapper mm. this week. Get up the, that top end. I know it's going to be busy at Altona ramp. You know, the yeah. one thing that's missing this year is complaints about getting fined at Altona. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, there's free boat ramps now, but yeah. I don't. Surely the overflow has got to be happening. Yeah. And uh, usually we've had, you know, 20 complaints yeah. by now, so I don't know what's going on at Altona, but it's pretty good. The weather's been that bad, no one's been able to fish. Yeah, that's, that's all right. Right. <laughs> yeah, good, uh, A little bit in. south of Altona is a really good spot right now. 18 metres, you don't forget that far out to find 18 metres. Renlar. Renlar? Yeah. I don't hear that name. It's thrown much, does it? No. Thrown about no. Do you know what Renlar is? Uh, it's probably a Scotch whiskey. Is it a blue scope? Yeah. <laughs> you idiots. <laughs> it's a tennis club off Mount Eliza. Oh, oh is it? Yes. Uh, I'm going to have a join the Renlar Club. It's oh a God. beautiful clubhouse yeah. there. Yeah. Lovely yeah. tennis courts as well. Yeah. Do you need a pipe? Mm. 
toilet. Yep, sounds like right. a hoot. Well, apparently they have the Renlar open on there just after the Mansfield open. Moving on. Oh, I tell you what, I got some grief over that <laughs> tennis tournament that I come second in the other day. There's only two, two players in it. <laughs> uh, over to Western Port, and I tell you what, it's hard to say. Don't go whiting fishing. I know it's snapper season, but Lyle's what? Channel up that top end. Mm. Gee, there's been some good whiting out of there at the moment. Where would you put in for there? What's the closest spot there? Warneat. Warneat. Turidan. Turidan. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Just some fantastic whiting yeah. at yeah. the moment. I mean, I, I know still they're in under both the radar, ways. whiting. Mm. Yeah. Because everyone's still trying to catch a snapper. Yeah. I know, but the whiting are a bit more whiting. reliable, I think. Young Don. Keeps telling us. Young Donnie. Yeah. Is Donnie. that old Donnie's son? Reckons there's so yeah. many. If you want to get out and have a snapper fish this weekend, head over to Silver Leaves. That's the next hot spot. Um, run out tide, uh, 16 metres of water. That, that whole area, I still think, yep. is the go. It that is Silver good. Leaves area for the yep. snapper. Yep. All right, the Murray Cod season open on Sunday, Trelly. Always yep. that happens on the 1st of December. And uh, phoned you through today to say where would be the place to go if you were heading to Shepparton for the yep. conference for the Kids Fishing Festival on Saturday. Cool. Where would you go? And you said to Lamba. To Tell Lamba. us about to Lamba. Never heard um, of it. Yeah, well, Tulamba's <laughs> sort of up, upstream from Shep, not that far. And um, when, I, when I said to you, Tulamba, it's all that whole area, so it's like... From from Murchison um, downstream to Shepparton, but bit like between Echuca and Berwick, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> hey? quite anywhere there yeah. along the you Golden really River. Yeah, <laughs> that's hey? right. Yeah, but the, the the river heights are excellent. The yeah. clarity of the water is is really really good. Yeah. Good land based access there, or is it more of a boat? Uh, land range? based, probably a bit more of a boat. Nice. But um, but yeah, all the guys have been the last two weeks out there trying to catch yellow belly. The byproduct has been cod, cod, mm. cod. You know, not, a bad, so not a bad problem to have. No, on little hooks and little baits and things as to catching cod. So, mm. yeah, uh, really good spot to go. There you go. Now, I mentioned earlier on that trout fishing is absolutely on fire. We saw uh, last week the boys that came to the trout conference, um, Billy and uh, old mate. Wasn't he, mate? No. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they've got 11 in the Delatite River. But yeah, I'll tell yeah. you what, two other young men, Jerry and Gaz. Yeah. Jerry and they Gaz. Went up, they went up to Nuji, the Latrobe River, oh. is our next hot spot. Brown trout galore, they said. Nuji. Galore. Yeah. It's galore. Good mm. Great place. Mm. Yeah. Going mad. Yep. A little hard bodies. Going off. Yeah. Some big crazy. Well, it's getting to that time of year where fly fishing, will, you know, there'll be hatches, yeah, there'll be insects. Right. Yeah, it and should already happen, but. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's still snowing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just the bogong moth is still. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Nice, yeah. cool streams. That's good. Yeah, that's no, good. Yeah. So, um, yeah, really good. so there you go. There's the hot spots. Um, boys, the other thing that is sensational this type of year. Mm. I don't want to tell everyone where to go, right? Because that would be wrong. If I know, I'll tell you. Scallops. Oh, Ooh, scallops. Uh -huh. I am told that yeah. the scallops are that thick yeah. at the moment. Now it's 17 degrees, yep. just under. Is uh, there a scallop season? Well, I don't think so, but what I'm told is it's a bit really? like Trelly and I. When it's winter, <laughs> Old. You, put a bit of, you put a bit of fat on. <laughs> and, and they say that the colder the water, the bigger the meat. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Whereas summer, it's a bit spent. I don't know whether they spawn or whatever they do, yeah. but they say coming out of winter, when the water's still a bit cold, yep. the scallops are at their best condition. Yep. The meat's fatter. Yep. And um, I tell you what, if there's ever a time to go and have a scallop dive, it's right now. And what yep. depth of water? Or does it just depend on how good a diver you are? I well, can't tell you where I go. No, so, but what no, depth of yeah. water? Um, it's deep, is it? No, I go three metres. Three well, metres. I, I only snorkel, for, I don't have tanks, so yeah, yeah. I only snorkel, but um, three metres of water, there is scallops galore. If you yeah. have tanks and you want to go to 10 to 12 metres of water, that's sort of well, on. you'll get your 100 in, you know, yeah. 15 minutes, to be okay. honest. Yeah, amazing. And the meat will be better yeah. this time of year than it will be in the in the midst of summer, yeah. if we ever have one. Can you freeze them? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So the best thing to do with a, with a scallop, um, when you clean it, and, and uh, they're not that easy to clean. I did an episode of yeah. I Fish with, um, with Paul, Paul. Mm. back in uh, March this year, and I, I said, bring a butter knife along because... Yeah. Once you, you get the hang of it, it's not bad. Yeah, I remember, no, yeah, you need I remember to get when it came down to the caravan a couple of years yeah, back yeah. with him, we... We did some scallops, yeah. on the scallops. But the, the important thing to do is once you've cleaned all your scallops and you've got yeah. all your scallops sitting in a bowl or whatever, take them down the beach or have a bucket of salt water and just give them a rinse. They're like yeah. a really good rinse in salt water. Don't let them touch fresh water. Mm -hmm. Put them in a bag. What well, their natural juices will mm. ooze because you know they're a juicy sort of meat, mm. um, and, and freeze them like that. 
Nice. And you so you've still got a bit of salt water in there. I don't need as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you don't need to. I mean, you can cryovac. I might cryovac everything, but yeah. you can put them in a freezer yeah. bag just to get the air out. Yeah. But they are just so juicy and sensational yeah. this nice. time of year. So. Moister than an oyster. Yeah, yeah. Moister than an oyster. Yeah. The other thing that's um, that I'm hearing really good reports of is is juvenile prawns already starting to run at Lakes Entrance. Oh, oh that's good. Yep. Because yeah. it's generally yeah. what next year that'll kick off. Oh, February, yeah, March, Easter February, shit. new moon. Man. Yeah. Oh, I think they start a little bit. Of, I mean, people yeah. go on their Christmas holidays to places like the lakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, You know, they'll have a prawn mm -hmm. and, a, and it'll start then. But I'm hearing some early season small prawns starting mm. to run already. So The other thing that has popped up is a couple of kingfish already around. I think I heard... Yeah. Barwon. The, well, Barwon, but I heard on the grapevine there was one caught, just a rat at the top end of Western Port. I, like I that. saw that. There's, there's yeah. always one whiting fisherman yeah. that catches a king on a pippy yeah, yeah, every yeah. year. Yeah, right. Every yeah. year. Now Kicks it off. It does. And, and yep. apparently that has that yep. happened in Western Port. Yep. It's exciting. There you go. Giddy up. Um, always things have, coming up. Always mm. happening. I'll tell you what, I just need a bit of warm weather. I think there's one 30 degree day coming up in the next month. Mm. Six days. So global warming. <laughs> there you go. That's it for Talking Fishing. We hope you enjoy the show. Next week, we are away. So we'll be repeating the Boating Vic app program, a must watch. The following week, the Minister, Jala Pulford, joins us live in the studio to recap 2019. That's two weeks' time. Until we see you then, please stay safe on the water and enjoy your fishing. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. We got all you need, just take a look. Watch those fish jump on your hook. So just relax and take your time. Enjoy the show, then drop us a line. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Talking fishing. Have a good weekend, Mr. Walker. You too, son. <laughs>